Welcome to JMW's Inside Man YouTube channel from JMW Solicitors. Please subscribe to the channel, like this video, and keep the conversation going in the comments section as well. Please also download the new JMW Inside Man podcast from your podcast provider. So we found out uh, today in the press that the Open Rights Group may well bring a legal challenge on the Mayor of London because of ANPR cameras and data sharing. David Smith is a partner at JMW Solicitors and specialises in data law. So, uh, David, what exactly has happened? Well, at this stage, they're only threatening legal action. We'll have to see whether it, it goes all the way. I mean, often these things are threatened um, and, and don't actually proceed to full court action because, of, because a settlement has reached behind the scenes. Mm. But, but the summary is that is that London, as as with many other cities now, in fact, uh, is is covered with cameras, um, which are what are called ANPR cameras, which basically mean they digitally read your number plate and identify your car. Um, at the moment in London, the Metropolitan Police doesn't have routine access to that data. What they can do is go to the mayor's office and because the mayor controls the cameras and say, well we'd like to know where this number plate has been. And, and then they have to give reasons and justify that request with regard to some piece of criminal investigation. Um, that happens quite a bit, about, about 30 to 40,000 times last year. So it's, it's, not a, it's not something that's difficult for the police to do or a surprise. But the mayor's gone one stage further now and has basically just set up a database and said to the police, oh, here you go. You just access all the camera data whenever you like. Now, an ANPR picture is more than just a picture of your number plate, it's a picture of your car and whoever was in it. Um, and there are some questions about, about whether that is a legitimate use of data. Um, obviously, the mayor is entitled to set up cameras, provided he can justify the need. But that doesn't mean that he's entitled to automatically share the data with every other law enforcement agency. They also have to show a need for that data. Um, in fact, one of the beefs the EU has with the UK over data use is its, its rather broad brush approach to law enforcement data sharing. It's not as bad as the, the US, for example, is, but, but still we're pretty broad brush about it. And indeed, one of the interesting points about the new data bill that the government has, which we've talked about before, is that the government is actually trying to make it easier for, for law enforcement agencies to carry out this kind of data share. So, so in fact, this 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 claim may collapse on the on the on the basis that the government's changing the law anyway to make it possible. And is there any getting away from it, David? Because if I leave the office, there's cameras outside. I go past the security guard who's got a body camera on. I might walk past uh, the police who've got a body camera on. Then on the roads and on the motorways, there's cameras. There's cameras everywhere. Yeah, and this is part of the mayor's defence. The mayor has said, well, people in London can't reasonably expect any, have any expectation of privacy when they're driving around in their cars. But traditionally, the ICO has up to this point drawn a distinction between, yes, of course, someone can routinely take a picture of me on the street because I happen to be on the street, and people um, actively recording and retaining footage of me, which they can then post-process to, the, and particularly to things like facial recognition technology, to actually start to build a picture. There's, there's a world of difference between walking down the street and accepting that somebody might see me and recognize me, and there being cameras all the way down the streets that are actively networked together on a computer system that is actively able to decide exactly where I went and why. Um, and I think the second one of those, I think people would, most people would probably consider a little bit troubling and, and heading towards a bit more of a, of a, of a sort of sci-fi police state type type element that we might not want to go down. But I think these are these are great examples of why data, people think that data law is quite dull and I accept that people think it's quite dull. Um, and, and believe me, my wife and family have been very clear with me that it's very dull. Um, but actually increasingly in, in the modern world, that these are things that are starting to, to really impact on, on the way we live our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think people will have to decide whether they feel that there is sufficient security benefit associated with that to offset the privacy implications or alternatively can we find ways to secure and lock down the data so that it's that we can be confident that it's only being used in a legitimate fashion 
there may be business owners, directors watching uh, this video right now and thinking, well, hang on a minute, how can we be compliant with our, um, our cameras and that sort of thing? So how can you generally help businesses with that? Well, JMW has a, has a long history and a lot of work uh, in providing data protection advice across the whole sweep of businesses and uses. So we're able to, to provide this to all types of business customer. And of course, we're happy to do so. Thank you for your insight, David. And if you'd like to contact David, you can email insideman at jmw.co.uk or call 0161 82 81 999. Please also subscribe to the JMW Inside Man YouTube channel for the latest legal news, insights and tips. And also download the brand new JMW Inside Man podcast from your podcast supplier. I'm Dominic Walker, JMW's Inside Man.